All right, so last I left off, I had actually gone over uh, quite a bit of stuff. I really ended up doing the, um, I could use the map components, the ArcGIS Maps SDK, and a regular application. You got event listeners and it's cool stuff like that. So I'm going over my Dev Summit session for the getting started with ArcGIS Maps SDK for JavaScript components. Um, I learned quite a bit out of that. I mean, just in terms of how I think I want to organize this up a bit, right? So I didn't really do much on complement with ArcGIS Core, but it did give me an idea. I'm going to add like a, like a layer and add some stuff in. Um, maybe like just show you, you can add a feature layer into it. Uh, using them with ArcGIS Core, I didn't really cover this in that last session, but I think people got the gist of it out of there. I do kind of want to cover uh, more of, maybe I'll do this, like using them with the CDN. And I did want to do a React uh, sample today. All right, I was uh, trying to help out Christian and he figured this out his own, didn't need me at all. I feel like I should steal his stuff. Um, okay, okay, so. Basically, a uh, cool thing you can do is you can just load um, stuff from the CDN with the map components, right? Like here, I'm loading the um, ArcGIS Maps SDK uh, directly from the CDN. This is the way you would do it. Now, this is like if you're going to do an AMD app and you're going to go ahead and uh, do some stuff um, with require and all that. And then I'm also loading uh, the components from the CDN as well, right? So they're coming from the CDN. So I've also got some Calcite stuff in here. Oh yeah, it does work, look at this. Okay, so I've got some Calcite stuff in here and everything, and this is based off a tutorial. The, the data is actually something that Christian Ekinus was putting together. I was, I was trying to help him with stuff like this, but he actually did figure it out at some point. He didn't need me course not why would you need me uh we've been doing a lot of work on the components especially this past couple of weeks so some things have under the hood have been changing here and there uh but they're stabilizing right now just getting ready for release a uh, cool thing you can do though is that like inside these different panels um you can just add the component like arcgis map gallery right and okay so so and i'll show you the javascript in a second here um, but we also have this concept of like a reference element, right? So components like this base map gallery are not inside of the map, right? And the way the components are set up is that if you place a component inside the map, um, there's some logic set up so that it will look for the uh, map element container that's inside of, and it'll wire everything up that needs to get wired up. Uh, so things will get wired up for you and are all good and in place, right? It's not always the case that you're going to have your components instead of a map uh, element. It might be in sidebars. In the case of this particular example, they are in um, Calcite panels, so they're not directly inside of a map element. So we have this concept of a reference element. Actually, it's something that Calcite does as well for some of its components. Um, you have a reference element telling you what is the ID for your map element, and we're going to figure it all out for you, right? We're going to look for it and uh, wire everything up together. Now notice that this is actually like the pound signed uh, name or ID. That's because it does a query selector under the hood, right? So you wanna make sure that if you're using the ID, put the pound sign in there, okay? So we're doing that. Um, and down here, it's got the uh, the map right here. And there's a map ID. And I hope I'm not stealing any of Christian's thunder by using his particular map. This is just the one that I had on hand here to work with. Uh, but after that, right, I don't have to do any um, AMD logic. This is the ESM uh, map components using the uh, AMD CDN for the ArcGIS map SDK to load the map and layers and all the different uh, pieces that it needs, right? So I pretty much am going to get my map. Uh, I have a function here to load the map that gets portal item and all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. This looks a lot like the tutorial on the Calcite site. That's basically what it's based off of is that particular tutorial. 
And this little logic is here, which is what you would have seen before, right? This way I showed in the last video where you're going to check if the uh, ready property in the element is ready. If it's uh, not ready, uh, or I'm sorry, if it is ready in this case, I'm going to go and load the map. If it's not ready, yeah, an event listener for the ArcGIS view ready change event, and then you load the map, right? Um, so that's how this works. We should, I've already shown this part here before. But I think it's key here to know is the fact that I don't need to load um, anything directly from ESM. I don't have to do any imports. I can use the current uh, AMD CDN with my components and it'll all work. And I can just load them. We saw earlier in a regular ESM application, uh, load them from the node modules as well. Everything works. It's going to use the installed version of ArcGIS Core. And that's because under the hood, we do some work um, without getting into the technical details of it to figure out if you're using a CDN or using, um, you know, you're building an app uh, locally or something. We have logic under the hood to figure out where to pull the modules from. It's really kind of cool. It's kind of neat. Uh, and I hope people uh, will appreciate that. I think you'll probably hear more about it at Dev Summit. We'll talk about that particular uh, way that we do things uh, again it's not it's it's built in to the components right so uh it's really kind of cool uh, i just want to point that out so that, that's like we're working with the cdn application so i think this is probably where i'm going to uh cover this particular piece here using them with the cdn they're amd esm agnostic uh, we got the event listeners which i covered no i'm not really going to talk too much about mutation observers the more i play around with using like mutation observers and stuff um, with the components. It's tricky because there's not really um, a lot of things you can watch. Mutation observers only work on a few things on um, DOM attributes. They only work on string number and Boolean attributes that are actually written to the DOM element. So I have to reflect those values back to the DOM for your mutation observers to work. They won't work on complex objects. So classes, like if there's a layer on the component, you can't use mutation, you can't use mutation observer on it, right? Um, so things like that are not gonna work. Uh, so it gets kind of tricky uh, here and there. We've been playing around with some different ideas and stuff, and we might come up with another idea of how to do some kind of like observability on components in the future to make it a little easier to do. But right now, the idea for scene anyway is that you listen for that, um, like I talked about before, ArcGIS view change event, which means that you've interacted with the map, something changed, and you could pull the center extent, um, some other properties in there. All right, so that video was on how to use components with the AMD CDN, and everything still works. You can build very a cool uh, single page applications without any build tooling or anything like that. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to cover how you can build a React application with the components. So don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thank you.